What are ovarian cysts and when should you be worried? Hey friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and an REI. And today I wanna to talk about ovarian cysts. You see, I have patients who are worried about this all the time. They hear the four letter cyst word and it freaks everybody out. And there's some basics that you should know about your body and what cysts are. First of all, I'm a fertility doctor. This channel exists for you to learn more about your body and your fertility. So if you wanna support me, if you wanna learn more, please subscribe and follow along. So if we start at the beginning, an ovarian cyst is simply a radiological finding. So a cyst is simply a fluid-filled structure or fluid or semi-solid, but it's some structure that is filled with some type of mere liquid thing. So when you think of your entire body, that's what a cyst is. And you can have cysts in different areas, but one cyst that we hear a lot about is an ovarian cyst. The number one cause of ovarian cysts is also something called a functional cyst. Ovarian cysts are extremely common. They're really common. And the odds are if you walk into my office on any day and I do an ultrasound on you, that I would find a cyst if you're not on birth control pills or some form of hormonal contraception. And the reason why is our body makes cysts every month. Every month when you ovulate, cysts are an important part of what happens. And so let's just think through what all cysts are. I'm going to talk about follicular cysts, meaning follicles. I'm going to talk about the corpus luteum a little bit. And then I'm going to talk about when you should be worried about cysts. Endometriomas, a solid appearing cyst, PCOS, what do these things mean? So first of all, what happens normally? Your ovary has a lot of eggs inside. And I like to think of the eggs kept in a little vault inside the ovary. At the start of the month, a group of eggs comes out of the vault and each egg is in a cyst or a small fluid filled structure called a follicle. These are really tiny, less than a centimeter in size each, but what happens is the brain will send out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. FSH will cause a cyst to grow. As that cyst is growing, it is growing because the egg inside is maturing and the cyst is working to make more estrogen. When the egg is mature, the estrogen triggers the brain to send out LH or luteinizing hormone, which first comes out in a nice high peak and that allows the cyst to rupture and you will ovulate. So the cyst, the ovary and the fallopian tube, they're not connected. There's space in here. And so the cyst has to actually burst and allow the egg to come out and the fallopian tube to grab it up. Then the cyst heals on itself and it forms a different type of cyst, a more solid appearing, or what we say is homogenous, like gray on ultrasound, because it's made up of more of fat cells and it's working to make progesterone. And that is the corpus luteum. So the same follicle, the same cyst that grew an egg, already ruptured once, heals back up, and then makes progesterone. And that progesterone is important to either support a new pregnancy. So when a pregnancy comes, this little cyst keeps making progesterone to support that pregnancy. When no pregnancy comes, this cyst can only live for 14 days without that pregnancy hormone. HCG rescues it and stimulates it to make more progesterone. Otherwise, it disappears progesterone drops and you get a period. So in the normal course of a menstrual cycle, two cysts that are larger in size, close to about two centimeters in size, I mean, we're still talking like teeny, teeny are really normal, okay? Remember how the ovaries are essentially free flowing. They are tied down to the pelvic floor by some vessels that come up to give them their blood supply. And they have some little ligaments that attach them on to the uterus. So there are two little suspensory mechanisms for the ovary, but it can really move around a lot. And when a cyst is forming on one side or the other, you might have pain. Your brain has a really hard time saying, oh, that's my ovary. Like the innervation or the nerves of our pelvis and our abdomen are really bad. But you may have some weird pain cyclically every month and maybe in the second half of your cycle and maybe around ovulation, everybody's a little bit different. And that may simply be that your body is feeling the cyst. Now, follicular cysts, follicles rupture, that's how you ovulate. And depending on where on the ovary they ovulate, sometimes they can bleed, meaning you can, it can ovulate, it can try to heal back up, but it can bleed if it bursts right where a little blood vessel was, 
into that cyst or into your abdomen. So if you ever had me say, I had a ruptured cyst, it was extremely painful, or there was blood in my belly, or a hemorrhagic corpus luteum, that means blood inside that corpus luteum, those things do happen, but they're a part of the normal process, meaning you typically do not need surgery for these things. They heal up on their own, but they can be painful. And one of the treatments we have for somebody who's gone through this and wants to try to prevent it is putting them on some form of suppression of ovulation. Cheapest and easiest way is birth control pills because birth control pills are estrogen and it tells the brain to stop sending out that FSH hormone. So now you're not making any FSH, therefore you're not ovulating. So your ovaries stay nice and small. There's no big follicle growing. There's no corpus luteum. There's no rupturing happening. And so that is sometimes a treatment if somebody's had a hemorrhagic cyst in the past or something that could be painful or bothersome to them. So if you go and you get an ultrasound because of pain, you're in a car accident and you got a CT scan, you very well could have a cyst listed. And what I will find is I'll say, oh, look, here's a little cyst. And you know, four letter word, it's like alarm bells go off. And I understand that because we don't like anything to be abnormal. But depending on where you are in your cycle, that could be very normal. And so there are times when it is abnormal. There's times when cysts look more abnormal. But on the basis, that can be super normal. So the vast majority of cysts are normal functional cysts, a part of ovulation that can happen and are essential for making our hormones. Now to dive in into other types of cysts really quickly. Number one is let's just think about PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome because this has cyst in the name and I hate this. I have a whole video on PCOS. I have lots of content about it. PCOS is essentially having too many eggs inside your ovary. So what happens is when you have a lot of eggs in that vault, the vault sends out a high number of eggs every month, therefore a high follicle count, and you have an ovary full of follicles, aka cysts. And so the PCOS is all those small, less than one centimeter little cysts seen in the ovary. If there's a classic ovary appearance called string of pearls, where it looks like the outside of the ovary has all these little black pearls around it, that is a very classic PCOS appearance. Those are cysts, yes, because they're fluid-filled structures, but truly they're not the problem. They're just a finding. And those cysts aren't harmful to you. They're not worrisome. You don't need to follow those or check those. Now let's talk about cysts that might be where recent or need to be checked. One is a cyst that can happen with endometriosis. Whew, endometriosis is my least favorite reproductive disease. It is truly a disease for endometriomas. What this is, is that normal process that happened, um, eggs came out the vault, one of those follicles grew as the egg was maturing, cyst ruptures, allowing the egg to be released. Endometriosis, which are these, which are implants of cells that are similar to the endometrium outside the uterus, some of those got into the ovary during that process. So that corpus luteum forms, but there's also endometriosis cells in there. And then once they're in there, they love it there. It has everything they need. It's warm, there's blood supply, and they just grow like crazy. These can cause pain, scarring, can drop your egg count. Removing them can be difficult at surgery. And so we don't always remove endometriomas. Once you have one, you have stage four endometriosis. So endometriosis is typically a surgery diagnosis only whole video on endo, but usually a surgery diagnosis only. Now, that being said, the only ultrasound finding that can confirm the disease outside of surgery is an ultrasound that shows an endometrioma. Then we know for sure you have endometriosis present and we know that you have stage four or the most advanced stage disease. So when we think about this, I wanna make sure that my patients who have endometriomas understand that they may run into a situation where their pelvic anatomy may become scarred or distorted because of stage four disease. They may have a drop in their egg count. And we really wanna think strongly about family planning goals in general. Most of the time we actually try to proceed with advanced treatment without taking the endometriomas out because we know there will likely be a drop in ovarian reserve after removal because of the scarring that occurs alongside them. So the take home message here is that if you have stage four endometriosis, if you have an endometrioma, you need to talk to a fertility doctor to make a comprehensive plan. And I will say in my endo patients, thinking about not ovulating or getting pregnant. That's what I like to tell my patients. There's no middle ground that I feel comfortable with because every month that you're ovulating but not trying to get pregnant, we're allowing an opportunity for endo to get into those follicles and create an endometrioma 
in a month where it's not benefiting us at all. Other types of cysts that can form, so another common one is called a dermoid or a teratoma. These are crazy interesting cysts. So they're actually germ cell cysts, and what that means is they're from different germ lines. So there's tissue that hasn't fully been differentiated yet, and they can form hair, scalp, teeth, they can be like fatty, they're crazy. These are almost always benign, meaning they're not harmful for your body. They have a very classic look on ultrasound, meaning you can often see like the calcifications from the teeth and the stuff, but they can cause pain. And depending on their size, they can grow over time. They can put your ovary at risk for ovarian torsion. Typically regular follicular cysts that come and go don't make the ovary overall super enlarged. However, once the ovary gets bigger than about five centimeters in size, especially when it's filled with all that like fat from a dermoid, it may really bounce inside the pelvis. And so it could have a tendency to twist on itself and it could twist off some of those blood vessels. And that can be a surgical emergency called ovarian torsion. And you might need to have surgery to remove the ovary in an emergent fashion. So if you have a dermoid, we don't always take them out, but sometimes we'll monitor them for growth. If they're getting bigger, if they're causing pain, those could be indications for removal. And then there are cysts that are on the spectrum of potentially benign, potentially malignant. Ovarian cancer can present with a cyst. Ovarian cancer is a very hard diagnosis. A lot of the cysts that mimic cancer also could be benign, cyst adenomas, which are very benign. So some of the signs of ovarian cancer often has nothing to do with, oh, I have this pain in my ovary. Again, our brains don't conceptualize pain in the ovary very well. But I want you to think about the fact that some of the symptoms of ovarian cancer can include weight loss or gain, bloating, weight gain in your abdomen, fatigue, GI distress, because sometimes there can be extra fluid made from the cancer inside your pelvis constantly not feeling right. Not just like I ate a big meal and I was bloated, but constantly feeling bloated, your clothes getting tight. Those can be some of the signs. And if you carry a genetic disease that may predispose you to ovarian cancer, like the BRCA gene, you might wanna get monitoring of your ovaries because you're at higher risk for ovarian cancer. In a simple cyst, which means the entire inside looks like it's from just simple fluid, it's not what we call complex. Complex cysts have a variety of architecture on the ultrasound findings. Those are more suspicious for cancer. So something that's a complex cyst could be that it has blood, it could be a corpus luteum, that goes away. It could be a dermoid, but it could be cancerous. So if it can't easily be determined that should be investigated further. Simple cysts are not usually cancer. It's less than a 1% chance that a simple cyst is determined to be cancer. Just to put in perspective, if somebody says you have a cyst, but it's simple, that's why we're not freaking out about it. And most of the time you'll hear us just recommend follow-up if we're not sure what it is, a repeat ultrasound in a few months, just to make sure nothing is changing. I have seen patients diagnosed with ovarian cancer on ultrasound coming in for a fertility evaluation. So I do take that seriously. And if there's a family history or anything seems off, please get that evaluated. Hope this video helped clear up a little bit about ovarian cysts for you. As always, I appreciate you here. Hope you subscribe to the channel. Feel free to listen to the As Woman podcast for more information or check out the Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks friends.